Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. And in the last stream we uh, spent quite a lot of time playing around with uh, getting the trains working up to, to work with our space elevator. And, well, let, let's talk about this for a minute or two before, we, before I go into what I've actually done here. So there are a number of ways you could set a system like this up. The, the simplest and probably most sensible one would be to um, have a system, would be to send your trains from a station like this one, where this one's full of copper ingots or copper plates, send it straight down here and up through the space elevator, and then have it go to a an unloading station at the top side, where it unloads, and then another, st another train comes along, picks it up from there, and takes it off to where it's needed in orbit. That would be really straightforward, because you just have a single train that goes up and down, up and down here, and just waits at the top end until it's, and, and, uh, until it's been emptied, and then comes down here and gets some more. So, that would be fairly simple. The downside of that is that you're passing stuff between trains. So you could make it a little bit more complicated. You could have a system that watches um, for any stations up in Norbit that actually need that particular resource, and then only triggers the train to come from here and go up through the space elevator when there is a station up there ready for it to go to. So, yeah, that would, that would work quite well. Wouldn't be too difficult to wire together. We've decided not to do anything like that, because that would be far too easy. Uh, you might even be able to do it with LTN. I think LTN now might actually support space elevators. So instead, we've got a system where we have all the lot. We have lots and lots of resources available. You can see they're coming down, coming down the belts like this, uh, and they're all. These are all coming from the stations up here. So we've got, we've apparently got concrete coming down. We've got uh, blue circuits. We've not got red circuits. Uh, we've got green circuits, stone, rare metals. All of these are being passed down long, 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 long belts all the way down here into this area. They're then being loaded into what we. I, I sort of want to call sushi trains after the sushi belts, where you have a mixed belt, it's a sushi belt because it's like the ones in a restaurant. A uh, sushi train doesn't make quite so much sense, so we'll just call, we'll just call it a mixed train. Uh, so this one here is mine, for example, which has currently got some things in it. Uh, it's got some aeroframe scaffolds and some coal, but that's, that's all we're requesting at the moment. And so this is working in a similar way to the normal systems we use with rockets and delivery cannons. So there is a place up in space somewhere that is sending a signal down saying, I would like certain amounts of stuff. So if we look on here, we can see that there is, um, we've got various signals on here for glass and, and beryllium, coal and aeroframe scaffolds. And, the, and we're sending down, potentially sending down negative numbers of the things we want. In this case, we were sending down negative numbers of coal and aeroframe scaffolds, but then some have been put into the train and, and it's, it's filled it up to above the, uh, above the amount we're actually asking for, and so these numbers are all positive, so we're not passing anything through. And that means we can use exactly the same system I've used before. So you see, we've got, we've got the belts coming in here with various different resources on them. They're being passed up here, and then each one of these is watching to see when it is less than zero. And if we're requesting enough coal for that to dip below zero, coal passes through here and goes into the train. Great. That's essentially what we're doing all the way over here with the rocket that takes all of the miscellaneous mixed stuff up to orbit. So here in this case you can see that plastic is flowing through at the moment because there's less plastic than we wanted to have in orbit and now it's now there's enough to satisfy the, the immediate requirement so that's stopped. Eventually this rocket will fill up, um, there's quite a lot of stuff in it already, but eventually that'll get to full and then the rocket will automatically launch. Now the thing is, rockets are a bit different to trains. They consider themselves to be full when there are no more empty slots in them. So when the last, when the last slot has something in it, it goes, aha, I must be full and will take off. And that means when you've got a mix of stuff in it, it still works. So for example here, you can see we've got these petroleum gas barrels. That one is not a full stack. There's only four out of ten in there. So <clears throat> it's not technically full, but there is something in that stack. So the rocket counts that as taken. And then the same with these, these circuits. There's only 120 in there. Um, there's only 70 electronic components in there. Only 16 plastic. And so on. So it doesn't matter if you've only got a part, part, a part full stack of one of these things, like these, um, these, these are small electric motors up here, the rocket will still happily launch. Trains don't work like that though. Trains have to be absolutely full before they'll consider themselves to be full and, before, and so they'll set off. And so I've set up a uh, what I think is a reasonably cunning system here where we uh, all the, the stuff that's getting passed up into the rocket goes through here and then we have a priority on the inner rows here so the, the most of the stuff will come through the, will come out out of the uh, come at these belts will go through here will go onto these belts and then be passed out in, 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 and up into the train. Great. When the train fills up, it'll start to back up along this belt because there'll be too much stuff. And it'll come all the way along here, eventually it'll, it'll get to here, it'll back up along here, this bit will fill up. And then this splitter will then pass stuff out onto this bit of belt here. And so these are, these belts are watching for when they, for, for, the, for, for any, any sort of contents on them, and they'll send that out as a signal. Uh, that signal then gets sent over to these combinators over here, which are watching for when anything goes to greater than zero, and will then output a single F for full. 
we then po pass both those signals up to the up to the station up here, and that passes them over to the train. So the train now at the pickup station watches for two F signals, which means it's full, and it also makes sure that it's been there for 30, at least 30 seconds. And then, and at that point, it'll depart. It'll go up the um, the space elevator and go off to drop the stuff off. At the top, it'll empty out and then wait to make sure it's got fully fueled. Then it'll come down again and go back, come back to this station. Um, I'm ignoring downstream for now because that's not relevant yet. We'll talk about that another week. And then comes back to Astro Pickup for more stuff. So, yes, this the, and the, the reason I've got four belts coming along here, even though there's only room for two to come in here, is that if you, um, if, you if I didn't have that, then when the when the train comes back down and starts filling up again. All of the stuff, like the, the bit, the, any contents in these two, on these two belts wouldn't flow, and they, they, they just flood straight through here, through these belts, and then into the train. And that would mean that these these bits would never empty, and so the train would then set off again. So I've had to put I put four belts in here to make sure that these can definitely empty, and I've told the train to wait for thirty seconds before it goes to ensure that these again have a chance to empty before the train departs. So this had, I've had to do a little bit of jumping, jumping through hoops in order to get that to work. But it does now, it does now work properly. The other thing I've done, which was uh, originally done because I had a, had a warehouse in here that was filling up, is we've got the the, the, the train is also uh, also feeding its signal, uh, re reading its contents out, and read and we're reading the stopped train value. So we're putting the train ID out as a T, and we're also making sure we keep the train contents visible because we need to make sure that. And the stuff in the train is counted, otherwise we keep just pumping through these um, astro scaffolds and the coal until the train filled up and left, because it wouldn't know when we got enough through. So at the moment we're adding up several signals, we're taking the, the negative numbers that are coming down from space, we're adding in the number that's in the train, and then we're checking to see if that has gone positive, and then when it goes positive we stop feeding the content, stop feeding those supplies through. We're also, also, passing this through a combinator here, which is looking to see when T is greater than zero. And that means, when T is greater than zero, T is the train signal, and that means there is a train in the station. So we only actually pass the signal through here when a train is when a train is present uh, down to, uh, to, to allow these to run. Now, at the moment, as I say, that's not actually necessary, not really vital, because the train... When there isn't a train here, yeah, okay, you'd fill these these belts up with with random stuff or more of whatever the train just came to get. That's not the end of the world. But before, I had this system built with a warehouse in here to cache the stuff until I decided that wasn't really worth it. There's no point in having it having a cache here. You might as well just feed it straight into the train as when the train arrives and as it's ready. So that was there to prevent it overfilling the warehouse when the train was in transit and you didn't know what was in it. Over on the rocket system over here, we've got a similar system uh, that works. What the watches for when the rocket is built, because it seems to take longer to build the rocket than it does for the rocket to fly up into space. So by putting in uh, somewhere in here, there is a system that watches to see when the when the rocket is full. Uh, here, when the rocket is made, here it is. This one. So when the rocket has been built, you'll get a cargo rocket signal. So when that's equal to zero, we then pass the signal through, and we can then start loading it. When there isn't a completed rocket here, we won't get anything flowing through here because, again, you, you, it just means you get more of stuff you are not ex not really expecting to get. So that's how my train works. This is my uh, this this one is taking up the, the all the solids required for the for the astro science. Well, most of the solids required for the astro science. It does also need beryllium ingots, but we don't have any of those on Norvis. And to be honest, we're not going to ship them down to Norvis just to ship them back up again to the uh, to the um, science area. So that is is still currently being done by delivery cannon, but will eventually be done by spaceship. We also have this train, this, this system over here, where there is an oil train that goes round, and I'm just going to go and summon that to demonstrate the, how the system works. So as ever, we've got the split between the um, between the ground rail and the space rail, and never the twain shall uh, meet. So the tra the, uh, these trains are only allowed to go on the on the ground rail. The space trains are only allowed to go on the space rail, and the space the, the ground trains aren't allowed to go into space, and the space trains. They have to be allowed to go around on the ground a little bit because otherwise you can't uh, you can't get stuff into them on the planet. But in in general, they do as little as possible. The, the the stuff I've got on screen at the moment is the entirety of our space rail down on the planet for now. So here is my oil train. It comes down here. It pulls up next to this train, and then we pump. We essentially we pump the oil straight from this train into that into that one. Uh, as you can see, there was already enough in it, so it, it departs immediately. Um, which is a, a little bit of a shame for for the demonstration purposes, but never mind. That's going to float. That's going to head back up to uh, back up into to Norbit and, and take that over to the uh, over, over to the Astro Science area. This train, I'm a little bit sort of sort of pleased with this because what we've done here, or what what I've done here, is um, I've got it obviously going off to pick up light oil as you do. 
then coming out here to drop it off. Um, and we're, we're watching for it either having an empty cargo inventory, in which case it will clear off immediately to go and get some more, or it will wait until it's less, got less than 40,000 fuel uh, oil in it. Uh, and been idle for a certain amount of time then and then head off and the reason I've done that is because the space trains are a weird size compared to the ground trains so these ones will take uh, 25,000 per per wagon so there are 100,000 in this when it's full, when it's completely full the space trains take 30,000 per fluid per fluid wagon and so that they only fill they fill up to, to so the ones we've got because they're one two one trains they will only fill up to 60,000 so it's more than half a ground train, but less than a full ground train. And that means that if one comes down here and fills up and, and goes off again, then you don't have enough in this train to fill it up again. So I could have put some tanks in here. I could have this train have to make two trips round whenever it's filling up and whenever it's filling up a space train and just go, well, never mind, the space train can take a little while longer. Or alternatively, what I can do is what I've done here and say when it starts to get a bit low, so when it's down to less than 40,000, that means it doesn't have enough light oil in order to fill up another uh, another space space train so at that point it will clear off and go and get some more light oil and come back and, and so, so we're ready to go again and the inactivity in there is so that it doesn't disappear in the middle of trying to load the train up because that would be silly uh, we're not I'm not doing funny cunning mix stuff with the uh, with the fluid trains because that way lies madness and nonsense so we are quite simply just putting one fluid into one train um, I could I could have put different ones into the different wagons on the train into the different fluid wagons on the train but I only actually need one fluid up there at the moment so there was no point in doing that we'll, we'll just stick with it like like this. So yes, all of the solids go up in this mixed train, and I say all, as there's like three of them, so it's not a huge number, but and then the fluid goes up in, in the one that stops off here. So that's how I've done it. It will come as no surprise to you to know that the others have been doing it completely differently. So um, let's let's look at let's have a quick look while I'm talking about this. Let's have a quick look at the top of my um, of my system as well. So at the other end. We have a drop-off station here where the, tra the train pulls in, it unloads everything, it all gets passed along, there's probably more warehouses here than we really need. I should probably replace these two warehouses with just a, a belt coming out from these these uh, these loaders and just run it straight across and in, in, into this one. Uh, I think three warehouses up here is plenty. I'll probably do that in the next stream. Um, but it'd be, anyway, they, it unloads into here, it all gets passed across, and I've used the same system on here that I used in the, in the space bus video, on the main space bus, and in which you can see in, the, in, in excruciating detail detail in the space bus video to ensure that the right the right stuff ends up in the right the right warehouses and as you can see we've got so we've got the uh, the aeroframe scaffolds should come out here and the coal glass and beryllium all come out of this one the beryllium is still coming coming in by delivery cannon as i said and landing in here the rest of it all coming up by train so that gets that then gets fed out down here as exactly as you'd expect. That's all. That's all working fine. So we've got one one drop off place. It all gets dumped out here. The the fluids are slightly different. We've got yeah. Here we go. Here, here's the oil train un unloading here. We've got this. This was in here because I had too much oil. Uh, I I had a load of barreled oil and I wanted to dump it somewhere. So I, so this got put in as a temporary system. But anyway, we've got the light oil available here. It's being passed out and and that should be the other way around. Oh, I don't know. I'm saying yeah. That should be the other way around. Pump that out here, and that'll allow us to carry on making the blank observation frames up here. So that's, yeah, that's that's working nicely. At least it is when I've got the pump pointing in the right direction. So yes, that's that's how I've done it. We've got it drop, dropping off up here. Other people, Tristan has done something fairly, relatively similar in that he also has a um, a, a mixed sushi train going on. So he's got he requires uh, blue circuits, uranium, plastic, green circuits, and uh, rare metals. Apparently, those are all being fed up here. He's got, again, he's got the same sort of thing going on here. Watching out for negative numbers. Whenever there's a negative number, we'll pass the stuff through. It gets passed up here. There's one belt that just goes up here and then flows in, into the train at the top. He's gone in for a rather more complex looking system for detecting when the train is ready though. In, in a nutshell, um, he's reading the contents of all the belts here, and I th and, and he, but he's doing it on pulse rather than hold. So he's, so the, uh, well some of them are on pulse, this, this one seems to be on hold for some reason. I, uh, I, I have to admit I'm not 100% sure what he's doing here, um, <laughs> but the general idea of it is that he'll know that when stuff is being passed along through these belts because he'll get pulse signals out of them. So if the belts are flowing, stuff is going, then he'll get pulses out coming out of them. If st when stuff stops, he then gets a held, he, he will get a hold signal here. And I think then in here he's doing a cunning system where he's checking several times over to see if there is anything, 
if there is anything on the belt, and if there's anything, and, and then subtract that from anything that's moving on the belt. So eventually, when the belt's back up, you will get a you will get a light, a high signal, and that can be sent over to the train. So let's have a little bit more of a look into this. Um, I may just abandon this idea completely and not tell you how it works. We'll have a quick look. Now, I've had a look through it. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, it seems to be he's, he's taking the signal from here. He's multiplying it by 100. He's multiplying everything by 100 and outputting that to C. So you get, you get enough Cs out for all of the things that are going, that are being acted, that are being triggered by the, um, uh, by the pulse signals here. He's then comparing that to an L. Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly how this works. Maybe we'll get him to explain this in this in the next in a, in a future stream. But basically, in a, in a nutshell, the idea behind it is that he's watching for fla for flashes on the on the pulse on the on on stuff here to tell him when stuff is moving, and for, for something being stuck on here. And if there's something stuck here and nothing moving, then that means the train must be full, and so it's time to send the train off. Uh, which which happens when he gets a, a G be a G of nine being fed into it. Uh, and that will tell the train to go. At the, <laughs> but other than that, it's working in basically the same way. So it, essentially, the, the, the basic idea is the same. He's feeding the stuff in here when any of these signals uh, are, are less than zero to tell him he needs something. It goes into the train, and when the train is full, it departs. He says he's come up with a simpler way of doing this, and has implemented it for Mark's train over here. Um, at the moment, that's just reading held signals, multiplying everything by plus zero and outputting... Yeah, I don't think that's finished. So um, at some point he'll, he'll hopefully finish that off, and we'll be able to see how it, how it works from that. But at the other end, he's got the same sort of idea in that his train will pull into probably one of these stations, unload everything into the into the chest over here, and he's going to sort it out and make it go down the correct um, the correct belts over here. So this works in more or less the same way that mine does. Mike, on the other hand, has to be even more different. So again, he's got the same he's got the same sort of system feeding in lots and lots of different resources. And Mike has a lot of resources because he needs to make the he's doing the material science, and the material science testing packs take in a, a huge number of different things. So that's why there's quite so much going on here. But all of that'll get fed through here. There's some sort of horrendously complicated tangle of belts and confusion going on here. Why he hasn't just joined them all up with splitters like anyone else, I don't know. It looks like he's got, what he's, what he's done here is each one of these gets half a belt, all of which feed into, feed. so he has used a warehouse up here. It all feeds into the warehouse and then when a train arrives it triggers these to open up and it'll pour everything in the warehouse will then pour out of here into the train. The train contents are also being read to, to, to make sure it doesn't get an overload load of everything, that's fine. But then the, the weird thing that he's done is at the other end he has created this monstrosity. So his train stops here and unloads into this warehouse. The warehouse then splits out all of the different things he's brought up with him and puts them into and puts them into separate trains up here for all of these different resources. And then when these fill up, they can then be sent off to go over and drop it off wherever it's needed. So these trains will then head all the way over here to the material area and and, and drop off here. So we were we were asking him a little bit about how he came up with this system and what on earth is going on with it. And as far as we can tell, it's basically because he and Mark didn't really listen when Tristan and I were talking about how we were planning to do our train systems. And they set them up in the traditional way, where you have a drop-off station for each resource that you've, you've got coming in. Uh, Mark has got the same sort of thing going on over here. So you drop off all of your resources into a station, and they go into, into, into your science area. Um, Mike also then decided to have this weird passing over system. Uh, to be honest, I don't know what he, I don't know why he's built it like this. Um, it, he, he did say something about reducing latency by having the train coming up the elevator, dropping stuff off here, and then immediately going back down the elevator again, which potentially could be a smidge quicker, I guess, but not really compared. To, but I think the amount of time taken for the train to rattle along from here to here is not that significant on this whole grand throughput scale. If anything, that should just have been perhaps a reason to make a bigger train or to have two trains running or something like that. So it's a bit weird, but I mean, but it's going to work, I think. So, uh, okay. <laughs> um, the problem is he doesn't have any system for detecting when his train is full. So he's sending it down to the material pickup. To, so he's having it set off when it has a full cargo inventory, fine, which it probably never will. Or when it has five seconds of inactivity and more than ten plastic in it. Um, I think the theory behind this is to stop the plastic one is to stop it going completely empty. And he, he expects to always need plastic. And the five seconds of inactivity is to make it go when it fills up. But 
I think he's going to have a lot of not very full trains running. Um, so I'm, I'm not, I have to admit, I don't want to be too rude, honest, um, but I have a feeling that this system is, whilst I think it will work, I think it's going to be a bit weird and not ideal. That said, that said, it is notable that over here, the, the um, this is, I think the material science is probably the one that gets through the most raw materials, mostly for making the material testing packs over here. These use a lot of stuff, um, and then you get through quite a lot of them when you're doing all of the sciences. So it makes sense for him to have a system that is potentially capable of bringing more stuff through. I just don't think he's really got that. So, um, well... We shall see how we shall see how it goes as he uh, as he as he develops the system further and gets it finished off and starts and it starts working. Mark doesn't actually have a system yet running yet because he's been messing around with other things and I think possibly waiting for Tristan to have a uh, a finished system uh, with the trains that, that that just works that he can then sort of just tap into and make his own and and have his own little um, ed additional uh, additional version of it. I think that largely covers what we've been doing with the elevator. So, of course, the elevator is still providing power to the uh, to the, to everything down on on Norvis. So we, we we're growing the um, the uh, the solar the solar system um, the solar power system up here. So we now have an enormous number of these. Uh, how, how many do we, how many have we got? Let's have a look. We now have about five thousand seven almost. We now have almost six thousand solar panels up there in that uh, in, in in that solar array, trying to collect collecting power for the for the for the entire fact. Well, for everything up here and down on Norvis. And if we click on a power pole, we can see that currently, yeah, we're producing two gigawatts out of the eleven gigawatts we're capable of generating. That's not not a not a huge amount of utility there. Let's let's extend this to to a little bit longer so we can have a look back over the in the past. So back here we were producing four gigawatts. So that was presumably this will be the day night cycle. So there's still a load, a load of solar down on Norvis, although we are pulling it up because it's less effective down there. So you can see this spiking up and down as the um, as the amount of power down on Norvis uh, generate generated by the solar panels goes up and down. And over here, you can see that it is the space elevator that is using most of that power. So sometimes we've got three and a half, almost three and a half gigawatts going flowing down through it. At the moment, I've I've got it on always day because I'm making a video, yada yada yada. So we are producing, um, we're we're not sending down anything like as much power as we normally are. Also, I suspect the um the base down on Norvis might have gone a little bit to sleep because that's quite a lot lower even than the nighttime ones were before. So yes, we are we are gradually moving moving the power system from being from running running on the free power um, uh, biomethanol system down on Norvis over to using the solar up in space and sending it down through the elevator. And so because of that, we've been able to start pulling up a lot of the free power stuff. So this 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 whole area down here used to be full of biomethanol systems. As it, and we we still have this area up here which is. I mean, kind of big, kind of chunk. It's, this, this is probably still quite bad for our UPS, but it is, uh, it is. Things are improving because we've removed a massive chunk of it down here. Now we just need to remove this bit up here, and we'll probably pull up most of the solar here. There was actually a lot more solar in up here as well. But we've had an absolute bot frenzy during the last stream, which has been extremely bad for my uh, frames per second, but has allowed us. But hopefully, in the long run, will allow things to get a bit better, especially once we've pulled up all this as well. The problem is. It takes a very, very long time to rip it all up because there's lots. Of, partly because there's an enormous amount of wood in all of these greenhouses. Uh, let's see. That said, there doesn't seem to be quite as much in them as I thought. There's a hundred. Okay, so there's a hundred in these in this greenhouse. There's a hundred. There's lots, lots of wood in lots, lots of these. There's loads of wood on these bells. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff to pick up, and of course, all the machines need to be picked up as well. And and they all need to be picked up from here and brought all the way down to our warehouses of storage. I mean shame, no, I mean storage uh, that are down down here. So these are all gradually filling up with greenhouses and probably with yeah with the with the gas power plants and and so on and so on. So we've got we're going to have a lot of stuff in here that we don't really know what to do with. We've also got a lot of solar panels being brought over here as well. So there's quite we now we do yes we do have six warehouses of shame. But most of them are pretty empty. So, I mean, for example, if I click on this one, you can see there's only there's only a, a few rows of stuff in here, and it's, it's pipes and and, and if tier one efficiency modules for some reason. Here we've got a load of solar panels. Here we, this this one actually is a bit fuller. Um, maybe some of this stuff it would be nice to get rid of. Uh, I don't know how we're going to. There's an enormous amount of ammunition in here and various weaponry and things. Just, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, and I think most of this, or a lot of this, has probably come from ripping up the free power, and also probably from ripping up older. Um, furnace uh, smelting areas as well so yeah there's a it, it's a bit it's a little, little bit messy but things are uh, things are, are gradually improving 
and that means we're now down here. Basically, all of a lot of our power. Oh, actually, a lot of power, most of the power is coming from the solar panels. But then we also have quite a lot coming from the uh, space elevator. But there's still also quite a lot coming out of the gas power stations from the free power systems, and that's what we want to get rid of because it's not it's not great for what we're trying to do. Up in Norbit, we have uh, some minor issues. So at the moment, the um, the scrap disposal system. Uh, as you can see, has completely jammed and backed up, and it's, it's all, all absolutely horrible. And previously, the reason this happened was because this heavy oil pipe here filled up, and we couldn't get couldn't get rid of it. So, in order to deal with that, Tristan has put it in um, a system somewhere because okay, the pipe runs all the way down here uh, to here. We've got a little bit extra storage space over, available over here, but more importantly, we're then pumping that through into these machines over here that are cracking the uh, the heavy oil down into light oil and then down into petroleum gas because we use quite a lot more of that because it's needed for making the orange goop, and the orange goop is needed for many many, many things. Um, so yeah, we were um, bringing it over here to turn it. Oh, we should turn some of it into lube as well. That might be a, that might be a good way of dealing with it. And then we can stop barreling, bringing stuff up in barrels completely. Hopefully, um, I'm not sure that's going to be the case. We might need to still bring it up in by train. But if we can get rid of the barreling system, unbarreling systems going on over here, that would be very very nice. So yes, we're getting rid of all of the uh, a lot of the heavy oil over here. Unfortunately, that means we've just pushed the, uh, the it onto a different thing that's now overflowed, and we've fed through. We've we've recycled so much copper. That this this station down here is completely full. We don't have anything to anywhere we can send it, uh, so it's all just a bit jammed up at the moment. What we intend to do in the long term is send all these ores down to down onto the planet um, and and have them re be re uh, be smelted into ingots down there. And those will be much more much easier to use and deal with and get through. So that will be that will be done sooner or later, and hopefully sooner because at the moment this is just jamming up the whole system here. Hopefully we we you'd hope we'll be able to get rid of some of this copper. And I think uh, Tristan uses yeah Tristan uses a bit of it, but he doesn't need as much as we're trying to get rid of here. The system up here can take probably some. We could we could probably we could bring some up, dump it into into, into one of these stations, pour it down here into the into here, and, and, and get it onto the bus because we do use copper here. Um, and also potentially with a little bit of redesign, we could bring it over here to another temporary station, then put it through and put it onto this belt. So we use that instead of the uh, instead of the copper ingots for a while. That could be quite nice. And there are some spare um, uh, station areas over here, so maybe that would be a good way to get rid of it. Although that will mean going in and um, and fiddling with um, Mike's area, if you'll pardon the expression, and I don't know how pleased he's going to be with us for doing that. In the long run, though, it's not going to be a problem because we'll ship the ores down to Norvis where they can be uh, smelted much, much more efficiently, and then hopefully we'll be able to get through all of this junk in here that just, just, needs, just needs dealing with, and, we, 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 and, and at the moment we can't. I think this is probably going to be quite a good place to stop this video uh, because I've it's, it's not it's not as long as they normally are I, I know but I think um, I've I've talked a lot about the elevator and what it's doing and a bit of the recycling as well because that sort of fill 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 some time. Um, but I'll get on to the sort of the sciences and the things that have been being done elsewhere in the in, in tomorrow's video in order to just sort of split things up a little bit and keep and trying to try to keep the two even. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. As always, there is plenty going on on the channel. We'll be back on Monday for the uh, next part of this stream where we'll be fixing some of the problems I've been talking about here and just trying to generally get on with it and get more more science, more everything up and running. I'll be back on Wednesday where I shall be continuing the uh, my new XCOM 2 War of the Chosen uh, stream, and that one is is, is available for people. To, um, for you to submit your own soldiers to. So uh, at the moment I don't have an enormous number of soldiers and I know that XCOM can be fairly fatal. So if you fancy coming along and dropping it in and, um, and, 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 don't, and adding a soldier to the roster then please do. There's a, there's a video in the, um, which you, I, I shall link to which you can, you can watch. tells you how to use the, uh, the free XCOM 2 Propaganda Center which is available on Steam in order to make yourself a soldier and send them over to me to, uh, to, uh, to try out and play with and, 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 and add, to the, uh, add to the squad. On Tuesday there will be some sort of miscellaneous Factor, probably Factorio video. So at the moment, they, they, if you're a if you're a uh, non-supporter, you will see last week's Pyanodons um, video where Mark is continuing on uh, and growing some small creatures. And if you are a channel supporter, then there'll be a mystery video. And I, I say mystery video because I haven't made it yet, so I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, I'm organised, me, we're honest. Um, and of course, Fridays and Saturdays are when we have the catch-up videos that you're watching at the moment. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel, etc, etc. Come along and join us on the Discord if you want to chat. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.